Uh, the actress in the, the, the newer Brady movie. What, what's her name? I have no clue. It's not Alicia Silverstone. Well, no, it's not Alicia Mar- Silverstone. Marsha Brady, one of the Brady. Wasn't she, one of the Marshas. Isn't she married to Ben Stiller now? That's a blast from the past, John. It's still Alicia Silverstone. No, Ben Stiller. The actor. Not the Ben. Encino Man. Ben. What's that guy's That's name? Ben. What's his name? His name is Toby Maguire. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I'm tired? Uh, it's um, Ben. Encino uh, Man. Ben Affleck. No. no. Encino Man. He was in a movie called Passion of Darkly Noon. Okay. Which was so weird. You got to see his dick. Polly Shore. Bowls. No, the guy <laughs> that we're talking about. Blast from the past. To- Toby, no. It's not Toby. Megan a- McGuire. <laughs> he's not a McGuire either. Oh my God, what is his damn name? Ben Affleck. No, 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 he said it's that. It's not Ben Affleck. All our audience members are screaming at us right now. Like, it's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. <laughs> he's married to Gwen Stefani. Oh, look at that. Is he? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything. Why are yeah, you listening to this podcast? Honestly. What? God dang it. What is that guy's name? Paul Rudd. No, no, no. That's Smith. No, Paul Rudd's here with Alicia Silverstone. Um, I just saw one of my things. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those fucking menus. He was also in Monkey Bone. I know exactly. Brendan Fraser. There. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Monkey Bone the one that did it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. What was the that one was where exhausting. he was with I'm the, the devil? He made a deal with the devil and he had a bunch of the witches. Dazzle. The Dazzle. Or Bejeweled? The, no, the it's the Dazzle. <laughs> Not Bejeweled. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he, uh, he. What happened to him? Where is he? Oh, he's dead. No, he's <laughs> not. Well, I don't is know. That, what is that? Maybe it's sweat? Rear- <laughs> Ashley has a towel in her hand. I have, I I have many things. I have a clipboard and a She's towel. She's got a ton of stuff today. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to One Foot on the Ground. Yeah, this is Johnny. This is Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is and Ashley. We're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're watching Clueless. From 1995. Right, that's right. Yeah. Smack dab Look at me because I have memories of watching it. <laughs> when it came out. Ooh, was it in the month of July? I don't know, possibly. No, no, no. I don't. Well, I don't. I don't know if I saw it in the theater or not. I distinctly remember watching it many times in my living room in Georgia. Okay. I remember just being in that room and watching it. We'd have like parties where we'd have people come over and watch it with us because it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> like over and over. And over. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this movie. I quote the whole I have, damn thing. Oh my goodness! What's your favorite quote? Oh god, I don't even know. I mean, well, maybe not a quote so much, but one of my favorite moments ever uh-huh. is when they get on the freeway. <laughs> that seems to be a lot of favorite moments. I can't stand how much I laugh hysterically every single time at that. Like, is it like because of all the shut up? <laughs> 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 old lady He's flicking them off. Yeah, and the biker game comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and Dion's just like screaming like ah! <laughs> Oh my god, it's the funniest thing. <laughs> Her virginity went from technical to non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, man. My, my favorite is at the party when they're, when Dion walks in on Murray uh, shaving his head what just are we before. What my grandchildren? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm keeping it real. I'm, I'm keeping, keeping it real. real. I'm keeping Keep it real. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm going to call your mom. <laughs> I'm keeping it. Oh, no, baby, don't call my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it real. I, oh, God, I love this. I love it's, it. It's timeless. It's so good. 
Oh shit, I already opened mine. I'm sorry. <gasps> Click, little, 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 little. Yeah, that, that was perfect. I'm doing Gourds Gone Wild. Gourds Gone Wild! Bye. TBBC. Tampa. Tampa Bay Brewing Company. There you go. It's a pumpkin ale. It's really good. Is it? Good. Oh, I've had it before. I well, think. Well, but Maybe. Unless this well, is I think we've had it on this podcast before, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, write us and tell us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm drinking Funky Buddha's Hop Gun. It's an IPA. I just need to... Unwind? Clear it out of my fridge, the IPAs. I see. So... So, the movie opens with an ad for pimple cream. Noxzema. <laughs> Does anybody know what Noxzema is anymore? Do they have that still? Oh, I don't is know. Is still a thing? It's I don't a, think it is. Because I think, squash. I feel like it's um, kind of been rendered moot. Because I like, don't think it actually did anything. I think it's just <laughs> shit that you put on your face to burn your face off. And then you're like, oh shit, I'm not going to use that again. Didn't they have the little the pads stringent. too? Like yeah. The little... Oh god, they were awful. Yeah. And I had acne. I had acne, too. I went through a lot of stuff. So, gotta love David Bowie. For makeup? Soundtrack. Oh. (laughs) What does he have to do with Noxzema? Turn to the right. Look at that old computer. Yeah, but with that high-tech... Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not technically a thing. Yeah, this is how you know, like, Cher is rich. Not just how big her home is, but the fact that she has... A computer that has a digital, her her wardrobe digitized, and uh, helps her pick things out. Oh, it's so fantastic! But it bothers me that she can't tell if something's matching or not. Well, she also needs to have a Polaroid because she doesn't trust a mirror. Right. So of course she has that yeah. technology. Uh, to go with. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I love this. I love it. <laughs> He's the scariest kind of lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but he fights with me for free because I'm his daughter. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if people don't already know this, I don't I don't know how much our audience knows about this movie. Oh my god. They came out of nowhere. <laughs> it's, oh, gonna it's gonna be a hard be a not terrible. It's <laughs> gonna be a great episode for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so Clueless. Clueless. It was by Amy Heckerly. Mm-hmm. She wrote and directed it. I it's our love second Amy Heckerly. Female directed movie we've done, right? Only the second? I think that so. Can't I can true. only think of uh, Mirror Has Two Faces. Barbara. Well, I mean, you know, it's Barbara. Oh my God. Are we. Are we sexist? I don't think we're sexist, but maybe we should be more thoughtful. Well, I, we are going to do a League of Their Own at some point. Oh, absolutely. And that's Penny Marshall all the way. Oh, love you her. know what? I'm going to start picking female directed movies. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, we each have chosen one. Like, have we? Streisand. Heck oh, wedding. yours is <laughs> this one. Well, I mean, I, I feel like this is a mutual. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. This is a mutual choice. Because I would have picked this at some point too. Although this is tricky for me. Because I have not watched this fully since. Uh, Murphy. Uh, Brittany Murphy. Thank you. <laughs> Passed away. Yeah. I just can't. And it's awkward because Dion became a racist black woman. Like, it's What happened with Stacey Dash? Well, first of all, she looks exactly the same. And she was like 40 when she did this shit. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> she, yeah, no, she's 28. She was like 30. She's 28 she in was, the film. Yeah. Or in real life. I, while recording this. the film, she was 28. Yeah. And Paul Rudd was like... 26? 20, I don't know. Paul, Paul, Paul Rudd, Rudd was younger than her when they filmed this, yeah. but he plays a college student. She Which plays is a high school student. Yeah. I mean, she still looks the same. No joke. Yeah. Have you seen her recently? She looks the same. It's freaking creepy. <laughs> but she's, oh, she's made some really uncomfortable comments. Uh, and especially like rever- regarding race. And it was like, wait a minute, but you're black. What, what? It was very awkward. So it's kind of like, what? Like, I feel like she might have voted for our current uh, Oh, well, maybe she president. didn't get a full picture. Maybe she lost her marbles. Maybe. But in this feature, she's, she's fabulous. Fantastic. She's actually, she's in one of my other favorite films from around the same time. It's Renaissance Man with Danny DeVito. Okay. I fucking love that movie. And she's one of my favorite I parts. Love Danny I love Danny DeVito. It. Oh, God. Well, we, that needs to be on the list. 
Renaissance that? Man or oh Matilda? Oh my God, I think that might have been directed by a woman. <laughs> it might have, was it Penny Marshall? Oh, I feel like we should look this up. Okay. I love Penny Marshall movies. Yeah. Jumpin' Jack Flash, that was her directorial debut. I did not know that. And it was Whoopi Goldberg's comedy debut. Yes, I did know that. Uh, oh my God, yeah, Penny Marshall is amazing. I feel like Penny did direct Renaissance Man. Maybe that'll be my next choice. Maybe. We still have to schedule our League of Their Own. This is, this is fun facts for the kids out there that are listening. It was his 50th birthday. Birthday. <laughs> Whatever. If she didn't do the assignment, I can't do mine. The <laughs> Oh, these listeners. It was directed by Penny Marshall. Boom! Uh, that speech, when Cher uh, talks about mm. the Hadians. She, she pronounced she it incorrectly. Know. Yeah, she didn't know. And uh, what's her face on set? <laughs> yeah, she was like, don't tell her. Don't, don't tell her. Everybody tell shut your mouth. Let's, Cause let's keep perfect. that going. Yeah. Because it kind of is. Yeah. It's, it fits her character. That she didn't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but so is, confidently. Is, oh, yeah. yeah. The thing is, is in this movie... Well, first of all, because we, get, we're getting sidetracked by everything. I love everybody in this movie, by the way. All the actors in this movie. This Absolutely. fantastic actor right here. Oh, right? Wallace? Uh, something Wallace? I'm really bad with his name, but I love him so much. Uh, everybody was cast perfectly in this. I agree. And anyway, so... Wallace, Wallace Sean, Thank is you. his name. Thank Sorry, you. keep going. And a, oh, I love, and a Twink, Twink, Ch- Chaplin, maybe? The producer? No, no, no. Slash well, Miss Geist? she's Miss Geist, yes. yeah. Um, she's, uh, Amy Heckerling and her good friends, she's in, I believe she's in all of her films. As oh. far as I know. Right on. Like in um, Loser, she played a, a stripper, I believe. Oh, I remember Loser. Yeah. With uh, Jason Biggs. Well, of course I saw that. Jason Biggs is hot. Yeah? Yes? I mean, okay. God. That was right after he had intercourse with the pie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude, he's hot. Okay. Hot. I watched movies with him just because I want to see him more naked, and he still hasn't fulfilled my fantasy. (laughs) He's never been more naked than the pie? He did have one where, no, 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 he did have one where he had his junk smushed against a window? I've seen that. Yeah. Where have I seen that? I can't remember what that one was. But um, anyway, so Cher's mom passed away. Now, okay, well, first of all, kids. Okay, you we wanna, gotta go You want to tell them what the movie's about? Yes. <laughs> it's, t- it's, a, it's a modern interpretation of Emma by Jane Austen. There you go. And you go. it is the most beautifully clever adaptation. I, this, is, this is on the level of like like when people adapt Shakespeare brilliantly. Do you know what I mean? Like putting it in a weird modern time kind of thing. Like Except this 10 one, Things I Hate About You. This one's the one that kind of started the, the, the classic literature that. in like high school settings. Yeah. Well, because yeah. it kind of works. Yeah, like uh, 10 Things I Hate About You was on Taming the Shrew, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? She's the Man was another. She's the uh, Man. O was on Othello. She's Othello, the Man with... Yeah. Uh, well, Othello was more of a... Wasn't it? Did it... It was more of a straightforward kind of remake. But was it... Well, I guess... I don't know. I never saw it. I saw it. But I never read of <laughs> No, I, I, I honestly don't even know. I don't, I don't think it was more straightforward. Maybe. That's one of those Shakespeare's I think the guy's I name read. was... <laughs> <laughs> I rem- honestly, I remember Save the Last Dance more if we're going to get into Julia Stiles yeah, oh, movies. Oh, yeah, I love Julia Well, 10 Things I Hate About You. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what we started with. His head has. <laughs> uh, so more, more on a uh, what? film. We we the story, the plot. Well, the, the Emma. plot of the story. Well, it's kind of like Emma. It's complicated. Like it's not like a straightforward. St- like, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, it's not like boy meets girl. Boy, you know what I mean. Like, it's not like a typical plot of something. It, it's a complicated it kinda, plot. It kind of has a lot of subplots. Yeah, and but the, the I guess the basic premise is is that in this well in Emma she was like a matchmaker. She was trying to fix up people 
and then never thought of herself, basically. Such a right. Does that make sense? And yeah, then, well, she... That is she, what it is. She does, in In Kalubis, Cher Horowitz? Horowitz, yeah. <clears throat> she, um... She wants to... She knows how to manipulate the world to do what she wants. Yes. Yeah. And she uses those powers just for fun, it seems. Well, she seems like a cat playing with a bunch of mice. Yeah. And in order to get a good grade, like, to, she got, like, a B- minus or a C- minus in debate. She, want, she went and argued her way uh, to higher grades from all her teachers. For everybody except for, except for, except for him. He's yeah, Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's debating her debate teacher. So True. she's like, you know what? He might be nicer if he has love. A good point fest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so she uh, she does a matchmaker deal here to benefit herself. Her. Yes. But then she feels super good about it. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to keep it up. Things. <laughs> and then they take on a project. Because and... far, far better things doing stuff for other people. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she doesn't uh, consider herself... Uh, once, even though it's all very selfish. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is interesting that <laughs> yeah. she does it that way. She's like, like I don't, I don't I date mean, high most, school boys. I think most things that she does do as her do good things, mm-hmm. they do benefit her in some way. Yes. But I think the overall thing, which, which, I love this part right here where she like sees the Snickers. She's like, ooh, Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice product placement, it's but, so like, good. in a good way. In a good way, yeah. Yeah. Miss Stoger is same Miss Stoger uh, was not into ladies on the television show. What? She dated men. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like Cher set her up with somebody, too. Who played Cher in the, in the TV oh God, show? I couldn't tell you. Oh, eh, well. Everyone else not was the Alicia's same. Alicia's Except yeah, for Alicia Silverstone. Well, Donald Paul Rudd wasn't on. there. Oh. And in the show... Well, it would be... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, it would be weird if he was, but Cher wasn't. But Cher was there. It was just a different actress. Well, yeah, but they didn't even... Da- like, that that whole plot point didn't happen as far as the show was concerned. Was, like they didn't get together. Was Tay there? Ty? Ty. You know what? I don't, I don't know. I don't Do you think remember. it was maybe before... Maybe. Maybe it, it could have been like a pre, everything a pre thing. Now, Paul Rudd did guest star on the show as okay. a date of hers at one point. All right. Uh, but he was obviously not the brother. The brother was played by somebody that you would recognize, but I can't. I couldn't tell you who he was. Um, totally fine. Oh, I love <laughs> Cliff's Notes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a Shakespeare sonnet that they she uses. Yeah. It's... Um, Oh, what is it? Oh, shit. Um, Go on. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease has all, hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometime decline, or by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanders in a shade when any, when in time, wait a minute, no. Keep going. In time, the, the time thou growest? <laughs> so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. <laughs> I wish you would have finished before... Uh, Travis got his applause (laughs) for being uh, late. (laughs) I randomly know two of his friends. (laughs) Oh, right on. And both have something to do with Alicia Silverstone? No, with uh, Jane Austen. I know this one, the one I just did. Right. I don't know if all those words are correct, so if you guys are following along in your Shakespeare book, sorry. He's not sorry. His fingers are crossed. But, um... I know that one because of this. Right. And the other one that I know is in Sense and Sensibility. <laughs> like, the right random up. two that I know is because of those films. <clears throat> oh, these, this film and the other film. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so, yeah, where were we going with any of this? I love the lemon tree. 
Just the sits in the bed. It sits in the bed. Well, she, at one point when she's making, what, tea for her dad or something? Uh huh. She reaches out the window, grabs a lemon, cuts it open, and uses it in his beverage. Man, Cher's got the life. <clears throat> I know. <clears throat> and it's funny, too, because there's, there's several things like that that I didn't notice until, like, the maybe seventh time I watched it. <laughs> this movie gets funnier each time I watch it, and I, it's just a lot of things I don't notice. Like how Paul Rudd makes a sandwich. Oh, yeah. And he just yeah, yeah. slaps just sl- mayo on the... And he leaves the- all the shit out, too. I'm like, <laughs> and he like, seems like he would be the more conscious person to put the shit away. Right, but, but I mean, for there's a main there. With the show. Well, yeah, but that's... He seems like the kind of person that would not leave right. a mess for somebody to clean Yeah, up. who would, like, respect the yeah, help. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, whatever, I, got, I get it. It's for the movie. Yeah. He had a thing that he had to do. Yeah. <laughs> He had, uh, he had he actually did that assemble was out, a pretty good him. sandwich for the time constraint that he had to do it in. And I feel like he probably did eat that sandwich. Hopefully. He, did, he definitely took a bite out of it. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least. How many times do you think he had to do that take, though? How many bites out of new sandwiches? Like, Seriously, yeah. that's probably why he's chubby in this scene. <laughs> 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 he ate the equivalent of 14 sandwiches. <laughs> By taking one bite out of 50. <laughs> I can't do that math, guys. I'm sorry. Somebody else do it. That would be uh, one bite out of 50? That's guess the one quarter? line in the yeah. movie that I think is so ridiculous. What is it? trying to get Marky Mark to plant a celebrity tree and the way he like tilts his head, he looks so stupid. <laughs> do people know who Marky Mark is? You know uh, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? Well, I do. But the kids out there might not know. Not, might not know that it's Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, who when is now a was, fine actor. Yeah, he used to be this <laughs> garbage person. At this not garbage point, person. Actually, there's a lot of weird pop culture references in this movie that are now kind of like not how you like like that Marky Mark being the guy that drops his pants all the time because yeah. he would do all the underwear ads for Calvin Klein. Yes, and that's kind of how he became. Super famous. I mean, Mark and Mark and the Funky Bunch was a thing, but it's not like it was. It wasn't it like was, New Kids it, on the Block. Everyone, or you know what I mean? yeah, like, they weren't hanging on to it. No. Yeah. And uh, so he started doing ads for Calvin Klein and dropping his pants all over the place, and that was how he got the, catapulted, kind of. The only thing I remember from him <coughs> is an interview he was doing. Around oh, that time period, this, yeah. yeah. Keep my body in shape for the ladies. Oh, That's how I remember Marky so Mark. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, as far as like celebrities, because like you know, Josh Paul Red wanted to Marky Mark to plant a tree, to, so that he use a celebrity for good. Yeah, uh, Elvis did that. Uh, he planted the, a tree. No, but he did it for the the polio vaccine. Oh yeah, and it it worked. Like I, I don't have the numbers in Do front of me, but know? I want to say it, like increased va- vaccinations by like forty four percent. My aunt, hmm. her doctor was the guy who uh, injected the, Elvis, created the cure. For oh, polio. right on. She was actually she had polio. She was like one of the his patients or whatever. What a selfless dude. Now it's funny because she actually knows a lot of the other people that were had polio and used the cure Mm -hmm. to quote unquote cure them but as she's gotten older she does have repercussion issues with having had polio does that make sense yeah like she always had to have two pairs of shoes like she'd have to buy two pairs of shoes so she could have two different sizes for one foot versus the other yeah um and she had to walk with a cane a lot and now she has to walk with like a walker sometimes and stuff. And she hates doing it because she's very, she has pride or whatever, you know, like she doesn't want to admit, look like she's having issues. Anyway, but not Yeah. Because, but, uh, yeah, but she's having a lot of, and she talks to the other girls that had polio at the time that she knew because of all that. And they all are kind of having the same weird uh, resurgence of issues. Which is kind of sad. Aww. But she, I mean, she's, She's doing okay. Like, yeah. Good. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> why were we bringing up polio? Uh, Elvis Presley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Look at him go. Here's one of the montages. I was oh, looking for the actual numbers. Yeah. That's him. 
Uh, that makes sense. Great. And it's a good thing, too. Yeah. That they did that. Get your vaccines, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they work and they are real. <laughs> yes. I, Stacey Dash probably doesn't believe that. Oh. I don't know. I can't well, remember. Well, neither does Alicia thing. Silverstone, right? Oh, does she not? Is she one of those? Is she the one that? Uh, no, Jenny McCarthy's one. The n- for no, sure. no, no, it was, she was the one who was. What? She got the lemon. Chewing up her food. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, uh, she was the one who was chewing up her food and spitting it into her kid's mouth, right? I think that was Jenny McCarthy, wasn't it? I, I might be, you know, I might be just melding all the weird things into Jenny McCarthy. Because <laughs> I'm like, Fuck she's not even a, a person anymore. She's a person. I mean, the thing is, is like, this is what bothers me about this. Immunization levels went from 0.6% to 80% in six months. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So that's one of those things, like all these things from my, this time period, like 95, 96, 97, like that time period, like Dion's messed up, Stacey Dash. Uh, <laughs> Jenny McCarthy's fucking nuts, uh, and I loved her show. Did you do you remember her show, the Jenny McCarthy show? The Jenny McCarthy show, <laughs> which is Suzanne Summers yeah. who sang the theme song. Alicia Silverstone was pre chewing her food for her son. Oh, so it was her confirmed. Ooh, yeah, she was in a movie not too long ago that I saw that impressed she me. Was throwing she was, up into somebody's mouth. No, oh. she was somebody's mom. Like a gay kid's mom or something, and oh, uh, King Cobra, I've not where seen he that. started doing the porns, uh huh, and she had an issue with it. Okay, because you know I, I kind of feel like that would be a reaction if your child came to you and was like, "Mom, I do gay porns," and she's so like, like oh, "Oh shit, how do I deal with that?" <laughs> anyway, she was good in it. She was really. How old was the kid? I don't know. Was he like in his teens? I think he was when he started the porn. It's okay. a true story. Yeah. It really happened. It's a murder and everything. It's whatever. Oh. <clears throat> but yeah, he's a famous funny. porn star, apparently. I don't I don't think I've ever seen him in anything, but... <laughs> so is it, is it John, John Waters? <laughs> no, not John Waters. Is that his name? Well, John Waters is a filmmaker. Marky Mark played him in a movie. Oh, Dirt Diggler. Dirk Diggler is the name of the character Boogie he Nights. played in Boogie Nights. Which was right. directed by it's Paul based Thomas on... Anderson? Right? Yes. Fiona Apple's ex-man. He was the one who, uh, he passed away, right? Did he? <laughs> I don't think so. Everybody's dead, John. <laughs> According to you, everybody, yeah, I can't remember the last away. thing they did. They're dead. He just made a movie. He what was, did he make? He made a... Well, he did The Master. That was not too long ago. Okay. Which I didn't see, but I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> he did the There Will Be Blood. I couldn't stand that one. Hated that movie. Uh, I'm probably getting all kinds of naughty messages right now oh you know i'm listeners. definitely thinking of a different person he might this guy might still be alive. i think he might still be alive yeah he's alive who am i thinking of the guy who was in like sideways paul giamatti no he's still alive he just did something i, saw, <laughs> I heard him on an audiobook um nah it's okay you guys talk good they this talk like really you guys talk like adults. <laughs> <laughs> I what I missed for a while was when Tay um, asked for herbal refreshments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, we don't really have tea, but you can like get, we have coke. And she's like, oh, you can, shit, you guys have coke. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, this is America. <laughs> Like, she's oh constantly looking for weed, and they're constantly, like, slapping her wrist. Like, stop it! Stop it! Yeah. Like, uh, there's an interaction here. Oh, this uh, guy's so yeah. freaking cute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's his name? Travis uh, Birkenstock? I think so. In the, in the film? He, uh... Like, she goes back, and she's like, oh, that guy, he, he even uh, offered to smoke me up on our, during our first conversation. Like, she was, like, so pumped that he offered her weed. She thought he was such a they sweet guy. to, like, get serious with her. Yeah. Also, the in the 90s. Hang out on the grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> I used to draw a lot of Marvin the Martians. 
I actually did because of this. Yeah, same. <laughs> I was like, I can do that too. Yeah, like I'll draw a bunch of Marvins. <laughs> He's still cute too, I think. You yeah, lose weight if you yeah. cut your food like that. <laughs> Look at uh, all they, the shit on that table. Look well, at all they, that food. They've got a bunch of snacks. And they're fucking skinny. Yeah, but it's all diet. Is it? Oh, light diet coke. Oh, yeah, but not the no. nutter butter. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's light? I only saw the diet coke. Light, Dan and light yogurt or whatever. Oh, okay, this fine, light. fine, fine, fine. God, you don't fine. You know read. what? Either. They're drinking like whole milk. I don't know. It's like a mixture so of really good squaw. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. <laughs> My apologies. Oh no, I put a ring on your table. <gasps> it's fine. Ah! Oh, never mind. It's worse now, John. You know where the coasters are. I know. Just, All right. just pick them up. Oops, my bad. I do quote. What do I quote all the time from this? I mean, I, I can't even. I do it so often that is it, it's, it's is it, part of I my totally pause. vernacular. Do you know what I mean? I do yeah. do that. I yeah. do that all the time. Like if I don't stop completely at a stop sign, mm-hmm. if nobody's around, I'm like I totally pause. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh-huh. uh, uh, that was way harsh, Ty. I say that all the time because if people say something mean, to yeah, me, I'm like way harsh, Ty. I don't think I honestly at this point I don't think a lot of people know these references. I'm certain. No, I'm serious because like I I think I just Maybe work. people are just tired of hearing well, it. From I say you. this all the time to my coworker and friend. You can't have them laugh every I, single time. Or be no, like, No, but uh, I don't this. think that they don't watch movies. A lot of the people that I know don't watch movies. This is I tell my this is what That's I'm saying. Weird, I tell my huh? friend slash coworker uh-huh. that I need new friends because I'm like, I don't understand how nobody watches anything or how am I friends with anybody well except for you because that makes sense I mean this is all we, we watch do. movies yeah <laughs> we just we do a decided to record it once <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah that's like the truth we do yeah this. we yeah. spent like four hours talking about movies and talking about podcasts gosh and then I remember we were like, some oh, of those let's conversations I remember too you talked a lot about the fashion in cinema the fashion in cinema did I really yeah Okay. Yeah, it was. was a, it was a <laughs> <laughs> very. Oh, well, we split there. a lemon bar. We did. <laughs> did we? What probably kind of lemon bar? You mean an edible? No. Because I haven't <laughs> had one of those. <laughs> you said you haven't had one of those. No, I never have. No. All right. Nope. So this I is think a bit I off topic. One. I'm pretty sure. Didn't I? Give you one you to have you. brought some to situations. Mm-hmm. Erica for sure did. Yes, she loved I, it. Yes. Uh, I did not. Oh, should I have mentioned that? <laughs> she was. Oh, you know she's what? She like lives all in a place in the where doobies. it's legal. Yeah. So it's, yeah. She can have whatever she wants. Uh, also, it's legal what? here now. Not recreationally. What? Oh. <laughs> well, I think I think she actually does use it for legitimate yes, like, she reasons does. or whatever. Absolutely. Know. Which is fine. Yeah. If it works, it works. Fuck it. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Even if you have to get it a different way. But try to get good stuff, though, because I, I don't do it try to get anymore. Good because, stuff. And oh, I'm pretty sure this guy. why is because I kept getting shitty kind, and then I'd have the worst. I, I can't do it now because I still have that, like, that thing where I'm like, no, because the last time, the last two times. Oh, like, do you get, like, really anxious? No, beforehand? I got horrifyingly terrified of death. Oh. I mean, like, <laughs> so bad. The first time it happened, I was watching 2001 A Space Odyssey, oh which is, goodness. like, the worst idea. I was like, oh, God. Also, that's oh, such God. a long movie really to was, watch yeah. while you're under any influence. Well, and I was watching it with someone, mm-hmm. maybe that I was dating? I'm saying that because I don't know, not yeah. because I don't want to mention who it is. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I believe it was somebody. I did. Anyway, not the point. But it was. Mm-hmm. But I think that didn't help because they kept bringing up all the deep things being brought up in the movie, and I was like, "Oh shit! I never thought it. I just love cinema. <laughs> now I'm afraid of dying." And then uh, the the next time I got high, I was alone. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be around anybody if I try to do this. <laughs> so I did it, and I 
exactly the same thing. I started getting into that. Oh my god, I'm gonna die someday. I'm gonna, which is true. We're oh, all gonna yeah. die. But Absolutely. it's just one of those things. I don't want to think about it too much because I won't. I won't want to get out of bed. I'll be like, oh, yeah. yeah, but you're not so, dead until you die. Well, so I know like, that, but I'm just saying, like, it just freaks me out. Anyway, so not the point. So uh, the second time, though, uh huh, to try to distract myself was like, well, I'll watch something fun, like a good stop motion film. I chose Corpse Bride, and I <laughs> immediately was like, wait a minute, there's dead people in this. <laughs> <laughs> like it didn't even occur to me until I started I was watching I was like oh shit I forgot this dead people it's in the title corpse <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and I haven't been able to watch that since then. that's so funny I once thought myself into a panic attack like I was I was alone and I was like man I don't understand why people get like paranoid and such when they when they smoke weed. Like I always feel just fine. And then I was like, well, maybe if I were to like, and I did this thing I love to do for some reason, is I like to put myself in somebody else's shoe and try to experience what they experience. You know, like it's like like empathy. being empathetic. Yeah, <gasps> but Embryo but concepts. And then, we're getting into funny face. <laughs> And then I was like, well, I guess I could see it because I am a little bit like more, I'm a little bit warm and, you know, my breathing is kind of like, you know, uh, like thicker or yeah, like I, I have to breathe deeper because of all the smoke and, and, uh, and I guess my heart is uh, racing. And then I like thought myself into a panic attack and like, I had to like leave. I had to oh, yeah, leave nuts. my apartment and like go for a walk. And oh, then... Wow. Ever since then, like, it would be, like, instant if I thought about it. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to be around people anymore. <laughs> In general. Yeah, because, like, I can't stop myself from giving myself a panic attack, even though I know there's nothing wrong. That was one of my favorite moments. What? Of the whole movie. What was it? When... Because I, I'm watching, but these people might not be. I, well, I know. I was going to explain. Okay. I just felt bad that I was interrupting you. Uh, yeah, no, it was pretty much the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. People, no. <laughs> this is probably why we're so good No, tell me, if, tell, tell me about the oh, scene. Oh, so in the movie, uh, the dad asks Cher uh -huh. aggressively, like, you know, what did you learn at school today? Or what did you do? What did you do in school? Today? Whatever he says. And she... <laughs> She's like, well, I did break in my new purple clothes. <laughs> and <laughs> the best moment is Which when Brittany Murphy gives her a reassuring, happy look. It is the funniest thing. Like, seriously, people, go watch this movie. Or you can just skip to that scene or whatever. And just watch her expression. I watched it on a loop once for like 30 <laughs> minutes just laughing hysterically. Because it's the cutest look I've ever seen. She's like... <laughs> like, she does this thing, and of course, uh, you can't. Where, see where what I'm she's doing. listening intentively and nodding and, and nodding smiling and smiling, and like and just like, a nice reassuring, just, like weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like the angle just, of her head. Yeah, know, everything is just perfect. Oh, oh man! And now party. they're at the valley party that Travis invited uh, Ty, Ty to. to. But they said no. Yeah, because. But now they were like, "Well, we're gonna have to make an appearance at this party because Elton's there." Well, Elton is the social curator, isn't he? He's the social director well, of the group. Yes, but he's also the the person that, that they're trying. Cher is trying to set up with Ty. Yeah, because she's a do-gooder now. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, I burped a little bit. Also, Elton. Oh, I say this all the time too. Say ambular. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer fashion zip victim or ensemble and challenge? Was that you going through my trash oh, my, or my, my dirty laundry? My dirty laundry. <laughs> like I would shop at Barney's. <laughs> I love. Is that what she says, Barney's? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Which I thought was a high end store. I guess not. It's not. It's still too low brow for them. Well, maybe for her. I feel like weren't they in Barney's at one point? I don't... Like, at the mall. They went to the mall, remember? Isn't Barney's at the mall? Oh, my goodness, this is too bad. What in the world are you doing? I am turning off my device. <laughs> oh, poor Travis. Oh, I love Travis. 
I know. He's such a good guy. And he also doesn't, well, people, people can sober up as they want, but at the end when he, like, gave Cher his, like, bong and such. Oh, at the, And the he's, like, he's, like, like he has, he has steps now. And, like, whatever. They well. never, yeah, they never <laughs> emphasize that, like, his smoking was an issue. They just mostly pointed out that, like, his smoking made him undesirable because he was, like, a low-class person. Right? He's beneath them because he's a stoner. Well, I mean, But yeah. nothing about him changed. No, not really. Other than him... Well, no he did have better the focus and then yeah, he got on better, his skater yeah. moves. Skater moves. Yeah. Um, this is. It's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he like puts his head under and he like rubs the Murray rubs the other guy's head. <laughs> oh my god. Um, this yeah. is kind of like the party that I had. Did I talk about that on the podcast before? No. So I had this party. Okay. Like, <laughs> it was so much fun. God, I thought I talked about this. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I uh, just maybe told you did and I just it. don't remember. Well, what happened? What happened was? Tell me. I went. Uh, I invited people over for a party. This is when I worked at a restaurant, mm-hmm. and so restaurant people are pretty rambunctious. So, the restaurant people, you know, I also worked at Sam Goody at the time. I think I did both. So, I invited people from the restaurant, people from Sam Goody. Right. I invited people that I went to school with and just all all these people. So, and this was when my parents had left to Orlando for one of my mom's craft shows and they were gone for the whole weekend. Your so mom had like, craft shows regularly? Oh, yeah. She used to go all the time. So... I mean, that's what I grew up doing, was helping my mom on the weekends with craft shows. Seriously. Like, all the time. We all had to paint stuff all the time for her assembly line kind of thing. Where it's like a sweatshop. <gasps> my mom <laughs> ran a sweatshop! Oh, I love it. <laughs> Except not in a bad way. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, so uh, Anyway, so I invited all the people over. And it became like one of these parties where it was like, it was just supposed to be like a certain, but then like everybody started showing up. And like, I mean, I didn't know half the people in my house and everybody was everywhere doing all kinds of things. The back porch was filled with people and they started freestyling at one point, rapping or whatever. And then this guy, like a Rastafarian. See, I feel like I've talked about this. The Rastafarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You talked about the Rastafarian. And he pulled that. Yeah, because who's that girl? We talked about it. He pulled the gigantic joint out of his hair, <laughs> and they started lighting up a doobie and smoking weed on the back porch. And, I was like, and then some people were thrown up on the front lawn. Mm-hmm. And I do remember that I worked with this girl named Andrea. And at some point, we got so drunk. Everybody was drunk. But we got so drunk, and we were like on the dining room floor, like reaching out to each other from across the room, like, Hi, Andrea. John. Andrea. And we're, like, go slowly getting towards each other. And we finally, like, held hands in the middle of the floor. And she's, like, and she kept talking about, like, we're going to play games together. It's going to be great. We're going to play games. And I was, like, what? And then we passed out. And then the next day, we all (laughs) hung over, had to go to, like, a store meeting at GameWorks. That sounds so we loud literally and did terrible. have to. It was <laughs> awful, but it was so funny because like that's what like we both realized at game was like oh games oh I get it now <laughs> <laughs> oh god it was a great party though and it was funny too because we cleaned up everything so that my parents wouldn't know that I had a big party yeah which is in I hindsight I think you told this part too yeah in hindsight I don't think it would have mattered because I don't think they would have cared mm-hmm. they just thought it would have been cool that I knew people. <laughs> Because I wasn't very... I didn't have a lot of friends. Yeah. So they probably would have thought it was awesome that I had friends enough to fill a house with people. So anyway, so we cleaned up everything and then like they came home and there was evidence of the party because there was one beer cap like stuck under part of the cabinet in the kitchen Yeah. that we forgot to clean up. And <laughs> my mom's like, what's this? <laughs> like, whoops. Also... 
uh, oh, did we just miss it? When they loaded up to leave the party and they did the weird back and forth because oh, Elton yeah, yeah. Uh, is <laughs> gross. Elton's so gross. Sorry, <laughs> so, <he's> so <laughs> like him serenading her with the cranberries. Um, he's he, obsessed with the cranberries too. Yeah, he, like, I can't find my cranberries. Do you have to go back to the quad? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, when they're going back and forth, when, uh, when Tay, Ty finally gets into the car. With that the she, light up ornament? Yeah, it's still lit and they're just taking it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still plugged in. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I've I always, I always thought, thought that, that was funny. funny. <laughs> it's still plugged in. Shamelessly <laughs> taking this person's lawn order, like Christmas decoration. Well, cause that's the kind of thing that would happen. Now, yeah, I mean, this, and don't get me wrong, I've definitely done that. But, yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's this is an actual liquor store. It's like a real oh, one. You know what? Yeah. And my, my ex, ex-boyfriend uh, used to go to that one because it was in this movie. He's like... But this is where Cher gets robbed. Yeah. And dropped for being a prude. <laughs> After um, being sexually harassed. Actually being sexually assaulted in this car. Mm-hmm. And she's like, uh, goodbye. I mean, it's fuck also, him it's for also, trying to take advantage of her. Oh, absolutely. And fuck him for leaving her. Well, all right. Do, I am not going to defend Elton. No. I do want to make note that Cher is clueless, right? You are She's a snob and a hack. Yeah, she, <laughs> she is so oblivious. She to was like, so oblivious to the fact that he was interested in her. But yeah. I think that was the thing, kind of. Go ahead. Wait a minute, no, no, I'm wrong. Because in Emma, it was very obvious that Elton was into her. Yeah. Very obvious. Like, he was kind of annoying about it. All right, so in the beginning of this movie, like, when she's, like, laying down, like, her plot and pulling her strings for the Miss Geis and Mr. Hall, Elton is, like, hanging over her, kissing her, hugging her, mm-hmm. you God, know? Elton, can't you suck? Yeah, yeah, and she's just like, you know, I am doing such a good job. I am giving, I'm getting such love from, you know, all my peers. When really, Elton is like, hey, girl, you want fuck? Uh-huh. The whole time. But <laughs> I, I love this so much right now. Oh, she gets robbed. I mean, it's really traumatic. It <laughs> she is, has a gun to her head. It is the funniest robbing ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she has to get on the ground, and she uh, she can't oh. because of her designer dress. <laughs> it's an alaya <laughs> and a what? <water? laughs> it's a totally, totally important, important designer. designer? <laughs> I quoted that the other day, and nobody knew what I was talking about. Nobody replied with, and I will totally shoot you in the head. No. That's very disappointing. It was horrible. Mm. This is what I'm saying. I need new friends. <laughs> yeah, probably. Just purge them all out. You don't understand. This is an Elia. And I'm like, what? A, it's like a totally important designer. Like, that's as far as it yeah. got with the quoting. And I had to do both parts. Also, I want to make <laughs> note that I'm glad that Cher owned herself in that whole moment where she was like no and she just like got out and just like decided to deal with like whatever instead of like i don't know you know i feel like she this wasn't, is a like, very good moment for amy heckerling to have put in this do you know what i mean like because it is an interesting thing how she dealt with the situation and didn't and, like, the responsibility of her calling somebody that she knew could help her. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's kind yeah. of a smart thing to do. Especially for a movie that was going to be... Well, I guess... I don't know if everybody knew this movie was going to blow up the way it did. Well, but, they... It, it was <clears throat> difficult to get it made originally. I can yeah. They want... She first wanted... Um, it was first on Slate to be a TV show. But then people kept dumping it. And then one thing that, like, the production companies really wanted... Uh, was for Josh to not be her brother. And Heckerling was like, nope, keeping that. Keeping that, she ends up with Josh. She ends up with Josh. Too bad, suckers. Because they thought, you know, it was a little weird. And she just, like, strong-armed it. Well, not only that, but, like, did y'all read, Emma? Like, bitch, can you read? (laughs) Because... 
Yeah, but Heckerling also didn't think it was weird. I think she's there was like a quote somewhere from her uh, that said that her grandparents um, were in a similar situation I where mean, they were related, related so but like matter. not. They were only related by marriage. Yeah, right. And and the marriage ended. Yeah, you that's do, why she complained about John, that. John, like, you why divorce women, around? not children. Not children, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this is, you can see a little bit, well, no, I guess you can't really see a tinge of this right now. A of tinge her of jealousy. What? I mean, oh, I no, think she it's doesn't, there, but no. she doesn't know what it is. I, I like that she doesn't, like, get jealous and get weird about it throughout the movie. Like, I like, I like when she, like, realizes that she's, like, Actually, totally in love with Josh. that is one of my favorite moments, too. And then. It's when she finally realizes the fountain in the background. Yeah, just and like. And it's Jules singing that song, by the way. Oh. Which is not available anywhere, oh. believe me. <laughs> because I want nine her five versions over again. of it. <laughs> God damn it. Where is Jules' version of that song? I don't know. Oh, in a van somewhere? I must <laughs> don't oh, I bet you can find it, like, now. No! I've searched. I periodically search, search oh, for this oh my song. word. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If if anybody out there has a copy of that song, please email it to onefootpodcast at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm serious. If anybody yeah. has it. Because you, you would have thought at least she would have put it on like a box set of shit or something. You know, like, <laughs> here's some shit that I did. Yeah, oh, maybe. Never. Nothing. But maybe Nowhere. she doesn't own it. Well, she does, but you know what I mean. Maybe Heckerling owns it, and she's like, no. Heckerling's like, it's mine. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> she knew everybody would want it. I mean, absolutely. I mean, obviously, they're good versions of that song that I could listen to, so it's fine. But, yeah. But not really fine. It's kind of fine. It's, <laughs> it's good enough. Which that song, that song, if I'm not, was that song written by... Go ahead. Uh, Harry Nielsen? Maybe? Ooh, I don't know. I've checked my vinyls. Do you have Harry Nielsen? Yeah, I love him. Do you really? I really do. Are we talking about the same person? Uh, he did Lime in the Coconut. He did... He does weird stuff. Um, Like, straighter than... Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, that's one of my favorite songs ever! Yeah, he does Me the... Um, my room. Do, 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 do. Straighter yeah, he yeah. does um the puppy song. Um, if only I could have a puppy, I'd call myself so very lucky. I'm pretty sure yeah. he wrote that song. I can, yeah. I don't know, like, a lot of old songs. Because I listen to a lot of, like, 40s radio, and there's so oh, yeah, many different know. people oh, doing yeah. the same song. Yeah, yeah. Just like in the you know same listen, decade, that's like a to, lot. I listened to a playlist on. There's Spotify only like three artists in the forties for music from the twenties. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I want, I want to know what music you, was like. In the 20s. You want to be a, you want to be a flapper. You yeah. <laughs> certainly do. But uh, oh, Christian. Oh, he's so pretty. I also thought he was very pretty. I very I, much liked his style, but uh, maybe it's because I'm also. Into he that 30s vibe. Did not age quite as well as I would have hoped. No, he did not. In fact, it quickly. He looks more like Sean turned. Astin now. Yeah. And it was pretty quick, too, that he. I mean, not to be rude, I, I'd still probably marry him. <laughs> That's a commitment. Marry? He seems like a good husband. He seems like a cool guy. And you know what? And she she decides that like maybe she can she can open up her heart to a boy, and uh, in order to attract this boy, she tries to make him jealous by sending herself flowers and chocolates and such. Mm-hmm. And he is under the impression that she has a love because she was in the only dates college boys, and uh, he feels safe going out with her and going to her place. And then, you know, he's also gay. Yeah. What is, how does Murray say? Oh, my God. That's one, of, that's one of my favorite. Because that's right before they get on the freeway, too. He's, yeah. He's a cake boy. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a, a Streisand ticket-holding friend of Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> he's gay. <laughs> yes. It's wonderful. It's so good. 
He's yeah. so attractive. And then after the seeing the movie, like, I, like upon watching it multiple times, like over time, like with Elton, I'm like, oh, it was kind of obvious that he was into her. It's also kind of obvious that he's super gay. Not super gay, I, but I like honestly, when he's. I don't think it was to me. Well, I mean, it, hold. It is in I'm, retrospect from me knowing certain things. Like when he brought over some like a hot and sporadicus. Yeah. <laughs> I, at first, I didn't understand. You were those like, references, oh, because I had never seen those movies at that point in time. But he also but is like. Then when I was older and I had seen those movies, I was like, <laughs> oh, he's gay. <laughs> like I would have known it real quick that he was, but you know. I love the so when he would he ask her if if she liked Billy Holiday. And she was like, I love oh, I him. him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amy Hadley, you're so good. Yeah, but the uh, when they're at the oh, chocolate. when they're at Josh's friends party, when she wears that white dress from Calvin Klein, I'm like who? It's a dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. <laughs> Um, that party that they go to, that Josh ends up going to later because he's jealous. Uh, well, no, he was sent there on purpose to watch Cher. No, he, he he uh, he was like, I should go, I should go and watch him for you, right? I should go, and he was like, Go, whatever, I'm oh, there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's when the dad has like a little smile. He was like, mm, My yeah, kids are gonna get together. <laughs> uh, you know, I bet the dad had that in mind the whole time. That's why he let Josh kept. He out. really likes Josh. I bet you that's what it was. Yeah, it's a smart maybe. choice for her, his daughter, to marry that man. <laughs> They didn't marry. Well, who well knows? they might have. I mean, she did catch the bouquet. We don't know. There's no sequel. Maybe they should do a sequel now where it's like they're super old. Oh, oof. Paul Rudd will look it's the like same. Keeper actually, yeah, it's going to be awkward to have. It's going to be weird. Just, with so next to a 12-year-old with the kid. immaculate Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that has aged about Paul Rudd, it seems, is his eyes. His eyes are so bright in this movie. Yeah. That's about it. I love that actor too, by the way. The dad. The dad. The lawyer. Dan. Dan. Not Horowitz. No, Hen. Hen. Is it? Hen. Uh, I'm, I'm not good with this. He plays like Eckerling wanted someone who could be a mob boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I want to say that he had played those characters. He's he's an. I just love him in. Well, yeah, because First Wives Club. Yeah. Yeah. Bette Midler's ex. Mm-hmm. And maybe Reconciled. Who knows? We never saw a sequel to that either. You know, they, re- they remade that. First Wives Club? Or no, it's like a show. What's up, Daddy? Yeah, The First Wives Club. It's a show now. And, oh, is that like... And originally, I was like this. This was thing? me originally. Like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> then I saw that it stars Jill motherfucking Scott. And I was like, oh, fuck yes. I am watching the shit out of that. I forgot about that until just now. I need to figure that out. It might already have aired. I don't know. Oh, probably. I feel like it was like an Amazon or Hulu or some, something like that. I'll have to find it. Oh, God, I can't wait. I want to see it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the... I love his car, too. I, I love Christian. I love everything about his style. What kind of car Dan is that? Dan It's not a Carmen Ghia, is it? No, I have no idea. <laughs> mm, no, I don't think it is. Or maybe is it? No, I I I, I have no. I think the idea looks a little bit shapelier. I don't think it's quite as boxy as that. I used to have a friend that had a Carmen Ghia in high school. She, yeah. Her name was Lana. She was gorgeous, and she was one of those. She was obsessed with James Dean. Okay. And there was just something about it. Like, you know what I mean? Like when, you know what I mean? Like, like she Christian? was like that enigmatic <laughs> cool girl. I also love that the Mighty Mighty Boss Towns are just oh, like yeah. here at this party. Well, it's LA. Look at the belts with the big dangly bit in the front. Do you, do you remember mm-hmm. that? I do. And you like there, you would, there was somewhere you would twist it like a loop it around and mm-hmm. have it dangle down. What was that? Was that a phallic thing? Is that why guys did that? I don't think Ooh. I ever did that. I always had belts that fit. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, it's kind of like a tie, like a necktie around your waist. It's stupid. It's almost Greek. It's like the cords. Yeah, well, it's terrible. Oh, yeah, and well, you know what, guys? Don't bring that back, ever. You know what? No. Bring back all 90s style because no. it was perfect. And no, sagging yeah. jeans. I, I can't believe that to this day that's still a thing that happens. I see guys walking down the street covered. <laughs> Tie falling down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the girl who fell on her butt. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. If you guys haven't watched this movie, there's something wrong with you. No, there's not something wrong with you, but maybe you're just too young for it. Maybe, I but drunk. I think it's also a little. I think that Clueless is timeless, though, because. The language Just and the a lot of clues I would consider a timeless film because it's not it's like in the nineties but it's also not like this world doesn't quite exist. Yeah, not really. Right? Yeah. Like was, there wasn't as ifs was or whatever or kind of making fun of Valley Girls. Yeah, that whole culture in mm-hmm. Los Angeles and like growing up there and like what is that like? And all that like all, all the, the girls slang. with the, the bandages on their noses because mm-hmm. they all got nose jobs. Like you know what I mean? It's like, it with their phone antennas. Yeah. You know when antennas, when were, antennas on phones. were on phones. <laughs> <laughs> and look but, at them flirting with but the this, bartender. Yeah, this is where I was like, all right, so yeah, maybe he's gay because he's flirting with the bartender. But then, well, then he Paul stops Rose dancing. They're talking to him. He's not flirting with him. <laughs> He's you talking know. to the only adult in the room. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. But in a bit, we're going to see Christian dancing with Cher on the dance floor. And then Christian stops dancing with Cher, unbeknownst to her, and starts grinding up against a dude. <laughs> well, that is true. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you I know can't what? believe I, I missed, missed that. The thing is, I think I missed that for the most part because in, like... <laughs> What am I saying? Because back when I was watching this, when it first came out, yeah, I'm paying attention to Cher. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me to pay well, attention. to And what I Christian also was thought doing. that Paul Rudd was looking at Cher. Like, look, in well, one well, of let's the watch the scene now and and get a good feel. See, I can't stop There's looking at Cher. All the time. Cher. between the two. I love that she keeps players. trying to do something with her shirt. Yeah. Like the her uh, sweater tying it around her waist, yeah. Had it on her head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Josh is dancing with Ty. So oh, funny. God, whatever, Christian, you weren't that great. Hey, he's got some classy moves. All right, you look can... at this stupid fucking shoulder shit. Cause love see, it. You're, you're I do so that engrossed. now. You see, look, you're engrossed with Cher. Mm-hmm. You're worried about her. Right, but then, like, there he goes. He's like, hey, what's oh, up? Oh, actually, that is kind yeah. of front And center. I think jo- that's and Josh Paul noticing. Rudd figures it out. Yeah, and he's like, oh, okay, I don't have to be but jealous. But see, you're also kind of distracted because you're like, oh, is Paul looking at Cher in a romantic that's way? That's what I thought originally. Yeah, but see, yeah, no, I don't he's think definitely I really, like, yeah. po- see, oh, like, but recognizing it, yeah, Christian. Yeah, in hindsight, yeah. I got it. I was like, oh, he just noticed the Christian's <laughs> <gay>. <laughs> And then I think that's when he kind of so probably felt better. Dancing, yeah. He felt easy. And then Christian's just like dancing on an empty dance floor. That's when I was like, okay, maybe he's too much. <laughs> Skinny on the... I, I always say to people like, what, what does he say at the, when she first meets him? Oh. Uh, Skinny on the happening clam bakes. Yeah. I say, <laughs> I say that to people all the time. It sounds like, like he's look for, looking what? for a lady party. <laughs> he's looking for a clam bake. That's what a my old roommate bake. used to call it. A clam, he'd be, well, he'd a clam, be like, oh, are you like to having a clam bacon here? Whenever I would have, like, friends over that were also female, he would call it a clam bake. That's hysterical. Isn't it? It's so rude, but so funny. Well, clam, I mean, a clam bake is a thing. But it's, well, such, yes, a, it's it such an odd reference, though, even for Amy Heckerling, because I was kind of like, I had to dig to find out what that meant, <laughs> which sounds funny. But I honestly think that it was because of... Go ahead. Scooby Doo, that I finally was kind of like, wait a minute, is a clam bake a thing? Because there was a, a Scooby Doo episode where they that started out on the beach and they were uh, digging for clams, and they were gonna have like a party or whatever. And I was yeah. like, 
Is it kind of big, like a party? <laughs> it turns out it is. Yes. Well, it's like a social gathering. Mm-hmm. But why do they fucking call it a clam bake? Because well, people, it's like a potluck, clams. but with, cla- yeah. with, with clams. <coughs> but yeah. So, heckling. What about Clueless. I forgot where I was going with that. She's fantastic. She had a difficult time producing it. Oh, and then yeah, yeah, you were talking she about was that. able. She eventually was able to. Oh, when she when they were doing the casting for the film, there was like a bunch of people that were suggested for the role, like Gwyneth Paltrow, who ended up doing Emma <laughs> later. <laughs> um, she got the part anyway. <laughs> yeah, Reese Witherspoon, who ended up doing a different version of this character almost. Oh, Elle Woods. Elle Woods, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like, because it's like, is uh, Elle Woods, like, in, in the law well, even, environment? Even yeah. Election a little bit, she was kind of like that. I love Election. Dude, I think that's on the Criterion Collection. Is it? I believe so. I love that movie. I don't love it as much as everybody else does. But... I always think about the part where the one chick is like, I'm not gay. It, I'm attracted to the personality. It just so happens that every person I've been attracted to has been a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? No. So the only thing saying. I really remember about that was, um, well, who's the guy? What's the guy? Is it Chris is Klein? It? No, no, no. Also in American Pie? Oh, uh, Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Thank you. I thought it was him. Um, where, where he washes his dick in the bathtub. Just because I thought it was... Oh, by the way... Go ahead. There are two Stanley Kubrick references in this movie. That one... That one... With the... The monolith looking mm-hmm. thing, which is her phone. Yes. And the 2000... Or the Thus Spake Zarathustra, mm-hmm. which is the music. Yes. Plays. And uh, then he says, she, uh, some like it hot, and Sporadicus, which is Spartacus by Stanley Kubrick. Uh. Gross. And a fun fact, since we'll probably never do Spartacus because I don't like it very much. <laughs> what the if scene I that they it? show. I'm not picking Spartacus. Oh, please don't. Uh, I mean, it'd be fun to talk about, I guess, but it's not. It's not the best movie. Sorry, Stanley. He knew that though. He didn't like it either. But uh, <laughs> but uh, in the movie, in this movie, they the scene that plays, which is hysterical, is the snails and oysters scene. Which is a famous scene that was cut originally from Spartacus, mm-hmm. and then it was uh, reintroduced in the the when they restored it, they added the scene back in, and it's a scene where basically Lawrence Olivier's character has Tony Curtis, at, which Tony Curtis was in Sun Like It Hot too. I never thought about that either. Anyway, but Tony is it, Curtis, that's the guy he has a crush on. Oh, he's a thing for Tony Curtis. So yeah, that's why him, they're oh, watching the two duh. movies. Okay. But, uh, so anyway, so the scene that they show is where basically Lawrence Olivier is asking Tony Curtis if he likes better women and explaining that he likes both. And it was snails and clams, I think, were the, the oh. two things. But anyway, so that scene in particular, like I said, was cut from the original print. So when they had to reintroduce the scene, Lawrence Olivier had, was not a, with us anymore. Right. And they didn't have audio from the scene. So Tony Curtis was able to come back and do his lines, but the person that did Lawrence Olivier's lines was Anthony Hopkins, because Anthony Hopkins understudied with Lawrence Olivier for years and years and years and did one of the best impersonations of him. So they had him do the 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 dialogue, which is a fun scene or a fun, yeah. fun fact about that. Scene. That is a fun. So fact. yeah, this is that's the scene right here. Hmm. Right on. I did not know that. So I think it's but you know, that maybe that that's was, the scene. Maybe that's why they chose the scene. I though. think that's why they chose yeah. the scene, though, because it is the gay scene in Spartacus that was cut because it was gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, actually, that part is not the gay scene. It's the next part of the yeah. show. That was just the first time he saw him, I guess. He was a slave. Tony was a slave. Well, yeah. Anthony, but Tony Curtis. Yes. Or Antonitis? Was that his name? Whatever, who cares? Yeah. Well, all right. It's a long movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't intend on watching it again. So, <laughs> my feet are cold. So, <laughs> he puts a pillow on. 
They had a bunch of people audition for the film, but uh, Alicia Silverstone didn't have to audition. She just had to have a lunch with uh, Amy Ackerley. Well, yeah, and she was uh, picked because of the Aerosmith videos. Yeah, Amy Heckerling was like, you have to see the girl from this Aerosmith video to her casting director. And the casting director was like, uh, you need to see this girl from The Crush. All right? Because oh, I want the, the girl same? from and The Crush. The same girl? It was, yeah, it's the same. They, they were <laughs> talking about the same girl. And they were like, oh, okay. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Liv Tyler was also in those Aerosmith videos. Well, she played her friend. She played Alicia Silverstone's friend in those videos. In the Aerosmith videos. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just shoved my finger directly into the can. It was weird. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Liv Tyler. Uh huh. Go ahead. Is the daughter of one of the Aerosmith people. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that's the thing. She did not know who her dad was for the longest time. Oh, yeah, 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 it yeah. It was like a weird thing. But also, it's super obvious, like, in the face. Well, yeah. She looks identical she, to Steven uh, Tyler. She thought that it was, I don't, I really don't The remember. guitarist? She thought it was one of the other ones. Yeah. Like, that's what they told her, I guess, or something. It's so fucked up. I thought like, that weird her shit. mother was married to a different dude, and so she believed that that dude was her dad. Oh, maybe that's I could be was. wrong, though. But he was yeah. in a band, too, which is even weirder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were like, all right, oh, but also it's... Uh, groupies? Actually, yeah, you know you how you have that weird, unique mouth and eye holes? Uh, yeah, it's actually Steven Tyler. <laughs> oh, this is him. Oscar Wilde reading. reading. Strides and ticket holding from <laughs> I love that so He does like the shop. (laughs) Totally (laughs) bugging. Bonehead. Aw. Poor thing. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) This is John's favorite scene, so I'm going to interrupt (laughs) and continue on with the casting. That Paul Rudd (coughs) tried to read for Murray's role. (laughs) But they were like... Murray is a black man. You can't have Murray's role. And he was like, <laughs> he wanted Murray's oh, role. Yeah. <laughs> he also read for Christian. Little... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my head hurts. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> In the big trailer. I love when he turns around to scream at the <laughs> semi. And his little braces. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made my head hurt so oh, bad. Goodness, this movie will never not be funny. It's always going to be funny. Yes. Oh, God. Hey, how much do you think the budget was, John? Oh, God, like, what? 30 minutes? After all that running around between... Look at all that rain. What the fuck is happening? Getting off the freeway makes it's, it's Florida, it's a, man. It's a sun shower. Florida. It's a sun shower. It's barely rainy. Plants are barely drinking. It was twelve million. Oh, I went over. You what sure did. I say, 30? You did. But they they were all like hustling between dollars. those those people. Yeah, they couldn't really get it made with the you know incest. I put incest in air quotes. Look at her little uh, little uh, dress there. It's very uh, Jane Austen. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh yeah. Nice little Jane what do they call things. that? There's like it's a name for that dress. Uh, you're uh, asking the wrong person. Well, I can't think of what it's called, but there is an actual name for that style of dress. I I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Because my mom used to mention it because she thought they were cute. <laughs> I always think it makes women look pregnant. Well, I mean, there is a style like it would fit a pregnant woman. Well, oh, for sure. Yeah, but it's like the way that it's like they have the the bow the tie, thing right yeah. under the the breasts. Yeah, so your belly can grow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I always think women look pregnant in those things. <laughs> oh, look, Cher's pregnant. She's eight months pregnant with Christian's baby. <laughs> From all that foot rubbing. From all those putting pillows on feet. Considering how clueless she was, certainly had that damsel in distress Oh, that's true. And now Cher starts to see that she made a monster. 
So she's created a, yeah. Yeah. She, uh, she made this girl who was a, just a little grunge girl who loved weed and Tony toning Colette down. Tony plays her in, uh, Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow. <coughs> Harriet. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I thought you were. Oh, shit. Oh, guys. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, the phone fell. <laughs> I mean, the recording device. Everybody knows the I record on my phone, right? <laughs> oh, we're so sophisticated. I got an offer to get the new one on my. Your, a new phone? Yeah. I still yeah, have to to this those, one. Those things. The anyway. new fancy one. What were we talking about? I don't know. What was the opening week, Jen? Tony Collette. Oh, yeah, Tony Collette. Have you seen Unbelievable? Unbelievable. It's a Netflix original. It probably dropped like two days ago. The no. But what is it? It's about an incident uh, where it's based on like an article where like a rape victim wasn't believed. And so she ended up saying that she had faked it. And like she like made it up. But yeah, this girl uh, gets raped. And it like the first episode especially goes through how many times like a person has to tell their story over and over again like she tells it to the first officer she tells it to the lead detective she tells it to the people at the office just to write down her statement and it's like a lot it's a lot and like and when the more you have to recall something less likely you are to um remember it right there's there's something like that where like things will start to like mix up and and like eventually they're like Someone gives them, like, the idea that, you know, like, hey, uh, that person has always done stuff for attention growing up, you know, coming from a foster home and, like, whatever. And so, like, I wouldn't put it by her uh, because she's acting very weird afterwards. She was acting like nothing, like, had happened. But that's a defense mechanism. I do that, you know. Yeah. And, that's not yeah, unusual, and so, especially and for so that they, situation. Like, yeah, and so she, like, says that she was kind of, like... pressured into saying like she wasn't raped and that it was made up and that she had lied and like whatever and she had like she wrote a statement for the rape and then she wrote another statement saying she had lied about the rape and you know and like moved on but then like the guy who had raped her was also raping other people in other counties yeah for fuck's sake yeah and so Tony Collette is in it and so is that one girl who played um, one of the nurses in Nurse Jackie, the one who used to wear, like, all the kitten uh, scrubs. Oh, I really liked her in that show. Uh, and they, they, there are two detectives in two different counties working cases of rape that, like, the same dude committed. And so they go and they try to find you know, what's, what's more rape that? cases. What's up with men? What is up with men? <laughs> I think like, it's like a, the men. a power thing. Fuck I think there's the other you know, things there you could do. This movie I saw, I think it was called... Start a Company, maybe? Descent, maybe? With, um... George Clooney? Rosario Dawson. Oh. I think it was around the same time as that one... No, that was De- Decemberist. It was something. The Descendants. Descendants? Yeah, yeah. The Descent. Is the, uh, the other one is the one in the cave. Is that what you're talking about? Well, there was that one. Yeah. But that, uh, that might have been the one where it had the same title, but it was a completely different movie. Yeah. Um, but I watched it because it's Rosario Dawson. And I was like, this is fucking weird. And <laughs> it got bit, there was some full frontal male nudity, but of course it was in a context that I was like, well... I kind of don't want to see it because it was awkward. You know what I mean? It was like, God yeah. damn it, Rosario. Put some good dick in there that I want to see. Not a rapist Whoa, dick. There's dick in Unbelievable. There's no female nudity. Oh, that's brilliant. But there's uh, there's dick. I mean, is it the rapist dick? It is. Oh, God damn it. What is but, that? But that, I... I that's some kind of weird, I, weird... See, this is the thing. We need to have... <laughs> Men naked in movies where we want to have sex with them, not the fuckers that we don't want to have anything to do with. That's fair. Like, come on. We sexualize women constantly. It's and then true. the rapist, you're going to show the rapist dick. Well, well it wasn't under, Thanks. I think it was in like a a shameful way, but I well, that's like what that they the, didn't, that's what this, they didn't this one did censor. That. Like she him. made him yeah. take off his clothes and get naked and 
it was awkward for him, which is nice. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway, but that movie was nuts because she, <laughs> she ended up having uh, one of her dude gay friends come over and rape him. And it was that's and then like, hey, man, do you mind coming over and later. raping my rapist? Yeah. And he did. He was like, sure. Why he, can't he, you? He had fun doing it, too. And he was a well-endowed gentleman, so oh, my it word. was uh, quite the uh, event. Actually, I, I think she, she would... might have raped him with a dildo first and then had her friend come in and do that. I think. I can't. Whatever. Either way, both Sounds happened. like a lot. Well, that was the thing. Like, yeah. I had no idea that this was going to happen in this movie. <laughs> like, I was like, I didn't tell you. Uh? Like, and it was the longest, most uncomfortable scene. And then that's where it ended. It faded out while the guy was getting fucked in the background. I was like, <laughs> that's, that's it? <laughs> okay, well, we resolved that movie. <laughs> she got she got what she needed. <laughs> I mean, and like I mean, I think that's one of those things. It's almost like a weird fantasy movie where the woman got the upper hand and got to do to him what he did to her. Yeah, which, you know, okay, like a, I get it, but like a, that was so. And all I could think was, like, this is back in the day when this is a weird statement to say, but Prince was still alive, and Prince okay. and Rosario Dawson oh. <laughs> like knew each other and like worked together many times and all I could think was did Prince watch this? <laughs> what did he think of this? Like this is awkward. You think he applauded her? I mean He's just like more power to you. He woman. might not have watched it. I mean and she might have warned him like you might not want to watch that one Prince. I don't know. I just I always wonder those kind of things. Like did Georgia O'Keefe watch Purple Rain? I don't know. She was alive. <laughs> I've never... Oh, wait. I've seen The Color of Purple. I've never seen The Color of Purple. Have you seen Purple Rain? No, I've never seen that either. Yeah, yeah. I watched it the other day. I've seen Chubby Rain. <sighs> oh, my God, my head hurts. Because so. <laughs> I love Bowfinger. <laughs> you do. I do. I watched Purple Rain the other day. And I cried... Just for fun? Quite a bit. Well, I, I had been listening to Prince in chronological order again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I do. like I think you do. And uh, I got to the Purple Rain era and I was like, you know what? I haven't watched Purple Rain in a while. And I'm always sitting there kind of like not watching anything that I really care about kind of thing. Pause. Yeah. Pause what? That was way harsh time. That was way harsh time. <laughs> Look at you knowing exactly when to shut me up. <laughs> I didn't think that her pause was going to be longer Whoa. than that. That subtitle just said the total wrong thing. She said she was Audi. Like Audi let's 500. Talk when we, let's talk when I've, we've mellowed. I'm Audi. But yeah. they put Audi like the car. Yeah. I'm Audi 500. That's a, that was the saying. Oh, it was? Yeah. People used to say, oh, oh, it's, it's Jewel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People used to say I'm Audi 500. I did not like, know that. Because they were saying they were out, but they were, like, making fun and referencing the car. The car. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. They, they, they bring it up a bunch of times, so I assume it's in the script that it was Audi. That's funny. Like the car. <laughs> Love it. Look at that. Love house. that house. Yeah, that's a famous house in, in Los Angeles, I believe. Is it the house where Hansel and Gretel almost died? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Oh, but my <laughs> Can't monetize it. <laughs> Don't wanna be. Oh, uh, uh, okay. He's not that monetize today. I wanna be who I am. Okay. <laughs> be who you are. We just won't make any money. <laughs> oh, look at me, oh, stop making uh, me laugh. Look at this cute Don't smile. Don't make me laugh. It's kind of a bald one. Oh. Um, well, Ty is also... I love when they're talking with Ty. And what were they, what were they saying? Like, oh, you need, like, a sense of mystery? And she's like, oh, I'm not a virgin. <laughs> like, she's like... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
See the exact opposite of like who they are. Yeah, there's your fountain. Sorry, John. That's totally my fountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've totally been in that kind of moment where I'm like, oh shit, I like this person. And then I like have no clue what to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us have, right? Haven't we? I guess we have. Maybe. I mean, at least Human me thing. and you. Well, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I dive deep inside my head. Well, and I also have a thing where, yes, I like them. But they definitely don't have any interest in me. Well, that's, <laughs> so that's, that's the whole... Weird. Yeah, that's the but whole thing. But then I still thing. have that weird thing in my head where I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, I just you kind never of like... asked. <laughs> no, I never yeah. Why would I? Right. I need, I need why, to, why would you ask someone? You to, this is why I always say like with, yourself. with people like... I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I, I could never say it to people, but, like, you have to be aggressive towards me because I'm never going to be aggressive towards you. But it's, that's not something, I should have printed on a t-shirt, I guess, or something. Like that. <laughs> because, because, you know, how would you ever tell somebody that? So you're just going to sit there the whole time and not do anything because they didn't do anything, so I didn't do anything, and I'm not going to do anything. Maybe they do want to do something. I don't know, because I would never do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but Did any of that make sense? Absolutely no, because I've also been guilty of yeah. being like, I can't do anything. Nope. Won't do it. Sorry. Yeah. But also, isn't that what Grindr's for now, right? Well, so you just like, it's completely anonymous. Isn't that what internet dating is? Um, it's not anonymous, but... Well, I'm sorry. It's from what I've witnessed... But also, I'm not a user of Grinder. Well, Obviously, it's not thing. for me. I think when I finally I've just did... seen a bunch of, like, penises. <laughs> <laughs> like, as, like, their icons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That ha- well, I don't know. If, um, mm, they might have stopped being able to do that. You do see them randomly, and I'm always like, well, how do you get away with that? Because I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but, uh... So funny. I didn't say that. Um, but, well, that's the thing I realized when I did those, Mm -hmm. finally, in my adult years. Yeah. (laughs) Not long ago. Uh, because I didn't really do anything until I was like 30-something. For Grindr? With Any of that stuff. Oh. Or even sex. Like, I didn't, it never happened. So, when I did, I think that did give me a weird boost of confidence, because then I realized, oh, I am attractive to some people. <laughs> like, especially in the gay community. I mean, maybe not so much at the moment, but what? like... you're a Yeti. Yeah, well, you're yeah, a bona I'm a fide hairy Yeti. Dude. People love the beards, mm-hmm. they love the hairs, and they like the package stuff. So it, it works. Don't out. do that voice when you talk about your package. Oh, shit, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> oh, I know. I was just giving you a hard time just to be a butthole. The if package. I... There you go. Talk <clears throat> about your, your pee-pee in a deep voice, John. Talk about pee-pee in a deep voice. <laughs> My pee-pee. Yeah. Well, you now... want to get on this pee-pee? <laughs> <laughs> the <All> aboard. <laughs> <laughs> My pee-pee brings all the boys to the yard. Go on. That's all I know. I don't know. Oh, is I, there more? There, yeah. But I. Uh, <laughs> Who was it? Uh, they're like it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I could teach you, but I have to charge. I, girl, I don't know any of that shit. Uh, it was in a. It was in a thing. Now Cher is knows that she's in love with Josh, um, and her friends have transitioned. Not out of her, but she, maybe she's transitioned out of her her friends a little bit, where she wants to actually focus on helping yeah. the environment. Pismo so she's doing the Pismo Beach, beach Reef <laughs> Tiffy's relief. bag. Yeah. And she's got a big old Ew. one that says Captain. Are you talking Look about Look at that crushed shirt? velvet shirt. Oh <laughs> my god. That is horrifying. And it had a gigantic puffy sleeve thing. Of course, yeah, it was big. It was baggy. God, that was horrible. Look at that box of cans only. That box has got to be so heavy. It's a giant box. 
Well, that's like when I um. Go ahead. When I pack, when I move, mm-hmm. <laughs> which happens a lot apparently. Uh, oh my! I always know how to do boxes well because I've had to move them so many times. Yeah. Because I have a lot of heavy shit. I got a lot of books. You got to put them in I small got a lot boxes. Of you get smaller boxes, and then you put books on either side of the box, and then in the middle you put softer things like blankets or clothing. That's gross. Or pillows. Yeah. And that way it's an evenly distributed box that's not too heavy to lift with your old, old aching back. You know what I do for my clothing? Because most all of it is hanging. And I just go in there and I just put a trash bag. I just like bunch up the hangers. And I put a trash bag in my clothes so I could just like hang it back up. I would just scoop them all together and plop them in the back of the car. Oh no, I put them in the trash bag so they, because then they'd fall off the hangers if I didn't. Or they have the potential to, and I hated that. Mine yeah. seems to work. Well, maybe yours is just all pants. <laughs> Mine is just all graphic t shirts, <laughs> <laughs> which are oddly hanging up. You gotta love that little Starbucks cart, and they have the. Yeah. the uh, 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 Go ahead. Grinders. They, oh, was, yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't think that's what you were talking machine. about. Yes. Which is crazy that they have a manual machine out in the field somewhere for this event. Like, that's crazy. Well, I guess they well, had it back then. they had mostly because you learned they didn't how to manual automatic machine. machine. They didn't do automatic machines until much later, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess they would have had to have. I wish they would have shown the machine, though. They didn't show the machine. They just no, showed the just grinders. No, just the grinders. But with the I also love that she had a cup in the beginning of this movie. Uh, it was a Starbucks cup, but it had, like, weird little pink birds on it. And I was like, oh, what kind of cup is that? Oh, look Which at you. Starbucks, yeah, Starbucks she crazy. Get? <laughs> well, because I, yeah, when I started working for Starbucks, then I noticed all that shit. And I was like, yeah. oh, where'd she get that cup? You yeah, because I mean? they have like the little home base cups, right? Well, no, like a, like a to go cup. It was a paper cup. Okay. With like little pink birds on it. Apologies. And I have no clue historically how she had that. Well, maybe it was made for, for the movie. Movies. Yeah. I was thinking that. I was like, maybe she drew the little birds on it herself. Maybe. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. It looked maybe. pretty to me. I mean, they might have had a special cup. Something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They do that sometimes. But I don't know if they did it back then. Is Because that was like 90, 95 or whatever. 94, 95. 90, yeah. But that was a thing. Like Starbucks putting their products in movies like this. Like that was they basically still do that. well. They still do it, but you know what I mean. Like that was a big deal for them because they didn't advertise for the longest. Time. When I worked there, they didn't advertise. Right. Like they had no billboards. They had no magazines. You don't no commercials. You mean like commercial advertising? <coughs> but like putting their like product placement. But product placement, yeah. they would do. You would have to ask permission, but most of the time they would say yes. For okay. Sure. But you. Um, but yeah, they didn't do advertising because they wanted to be word of mouth and then that kind of thing where it's just seen in the hands of people. Kind of idiots? Hey. I, mean, I mean, that that makes sense. It kind of gives them a sense of status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then later, like around the time I started leaving Starbucks was when they, st- like I remember the first time I saw a commercial and I was like, what the fuck? There's a commercial? Because that was like a big deal that they did not do that. Yeah. Well, so I was what like, another fun oh, fact. Look at oh. you go. Oh, well. That's just that's just a knowledge uh, that I obtained in my general. Yeah, now now they have a bunch of good lord. Ads. Now they have tons of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they probably had to at some point because besides the fact that like when I can't remember who it was, but the, the guy that took over for Howard Schultz briefly mm-hmm. and then opened up tons of fucking stores all over the place and then they had to close them almost immediately because they were like oh Ooh. shit and then uh, and that's when I still worked there like we were yeah. even nervous about our store like oh shit are we gonna close and um so they had to close a bunch of stores and it was kind of weird like even stores that they had leased buildings and they were going to put one there yeah and then they had to like be like oops shit nope and they had to like back out of it yeah. Which probably cost them a lot of money. I was going to say, that costs money, or whatever, yeah. Or leave the lease or break the lease or whatever. So um, there was all that kind of shit going on. And that's about the time when Howard came back. 
is when the advertisements were about to start or whatever. And that's when they started. Because it was like, oh, we got to fix this shit. Yeah. we got to make some money. And then, gradually, mom and pop kind of indie coffee shops became a thing again. Mm-hmm. And now you have options. So Starbucks <laughs> yeah. isn't the only place that you can go. Like, around here, too. Like, there's yeah. tons of other places. And we... We mostly go to the other places. We don't go to Starbucks very often. Yeah, I don't same. Anymore. I go to Starbucks when I want a drive through I go to Starbucks if I want a specific thing. That's fair. Yeah. Like, eight shots of espresso over ice. Where else am I going to get that and it's going to be as cheap as it would be at Starbucks? You know what I mean? Like... I go to a specialty shop and they want to charge me two dollars for a fucking shot oh of espresso. Oh my goodness! But I'll go to a specialty shop. Like some of those shops have no idea what they're doing well, that because too. they've opened a well, coffee and, shop. And I have to say, like, there's this pretentiousness about those places where they're like, well, "We do it this way." Yeah, that's Ooh, but it's not that's like not. Starbucks. And I'm like, yeah, but that might not be the right way to do it. Yeah, and it tastes no. like shit. And I had to pay four dollars for that. <laughs> I had to, I went to a coffee shop near here, because I like to try new, new coffee shops. Oh, absolutely. And I'll still do it, but. Yeah, and I, and I, um. I just know not to go back. I asked for an espresso macchiato, and they didn't, uh, know what it was, and I was like, it's just espresso with, like, a dollop of foam on top. It's just, like, a really small drink. I don't want a lot of milk. And then, um, and then they were like, um. I don't know if, like, uh... And I was like, all right, that's fine. That's fine. No big deal. Uh, uh, just can you tell me how many, um... How much milk is in, like, your iced latte? Right? Like, how many, uh, like, ounces of milk is in, like, your tall? And they looked like... They looked like I asked them, like, a complex math problem. And I was like, how big is your cup? Like, I want to know how many shots of espresso I want to add to it because I want a strong flavor... Like, like I will, yeah. And so I asked them how many shots of espresso, and they were like, um, I don't know, like one that feels like this container. It was like one of those little, the like you something that you would uh, use. I don't know if you were at Starbucks when they made a latte Avocado. macchiato. Yeah, you would like use it to pour the espresso. The silver, yeah, the silver, the silver can. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have one. <laughs> we used to use those for affogato. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Yes. And like, and they were like this, and it was like a large one. It was like three to four ounces, and I was like. Oh, okay. And they were like, how about this? And they, like, gave me an iced cold brew, but the cold brew was made with espresso. And I was like, this oh, isn't... you told me about that. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, this isn't what that... How are you open? How long have you been open? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. They, it was just like... Like, if you go there and you order something and you like it, like, that's totally fine. But it's... But having... I, it's the the success of Starbucks is that you can get the same thing. It's consistent anywhere, which is tr- well, yeah, mostly true. Yeah, <laughs> that's like part I of their mean, business model. Model you can go to any Starbucks is, I mean, in the world and order your regular item. Yeah, technically that's true. Yeah, but does it always happen? No, no, because there's dumb. It's in pretty the world. close though. Yeah, I mean it's closer than it would be if you went like you said, like you yeah. go to some. Mom and pop store, they don't even know what the fuck they're doing. I just wanted espresso with a doll at the phone, man. And they're made to, like... They're, they're probably trained to make, like, these ridiculous special things. Yeah. And then outside of that, what the fuck am I supposed to do? There's no formula. Like, Starbucks, there's a formula. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. That's also how you, you can call, like, gross margin. You and can assemble like... most any of those beverages yeah. the exact same way. It's just what you add to it. Yeah, that makes everything's a, a latte add flavor. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And, which is smart. It's not stupid. Yeah. So when you get these weird fucking, I don't, I can't, I don't even know. Just bullshit. Like, I order some things because I'm like, that sounds interesting. And then I get it, I'm like, oh, that's what it is. You just put shots of espresso over some San Pellegrino, and I'm supposed to have fun with it. <laughs> like, that's not what I. That's not what that menu indicated. Yeah. Like, and I watch them do it every time I order something from any of those places. I have to watch them do it. There yeah. are some good places. There I are agree. some good ones. Like the one. Yes. What is the one in St. Pete? Bandit, maybe. It starts. With, I think it has a B. Tell me it that. It starts with a B. Oh, they just. They have beautiful, beautiful beverages. Like they're just like odd. You know, mm-hmm. like weird flavor kind of thing. Ooh, I love odd. I love oh, weird I love stuff. It. 
And they do a good job. Their espresso tastes good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just, they do a very good job. So that's the kind of place where I'm like, well, yeah, I'll indulge in that. Because I know it's going to be interesting and good. There's it's a- not going to last me very long because their cold beverages are still like 16 ounces. Yeah. I ain't 32, bitch. Give me, <laughs> give me a much. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a coffee shop that I've been going to recently um, in Safety Harbor that has like I love their espresso and their lattes like everything always comes out like super great uh, but they all they have like fun flavors and like boost flavors oh wow. um, yeah but there's a lemonade latte that I've seen Ew. and I was like and it was like with espresso there's one without espresso and I one feel with like that's espresso a thing these days. and I was like I want to know what that tastes like but I and I listened in on somebody who had ordered it at a table near me and they were like oh it just tastes like a like a dirty chai and i was like oh okay because i pair my espresso with lemon you know so like it can't be like well citrus is supposed to help you what is it like it helps you your body absorbs the caffeine slower if you have it with a citrus oh kind of like uh like fat or something like, well, so your no, body that actually turns out to be not true. <gasps> I just listened to something about that, and I was like... Oh, right on. What, bitch? Like, it does for some people. Right. It can happen, but it not, it's not really a thing. But okay. the grapefruit thing is something that's true. Like, you can do that with citrus. Well, I don't know if it's all citrus. They mention grapefruit specifically, and that's what I've heard before. What I do say? not like grapefruit. I'm start pouring Oranges espresso too. over my grapefruit. Well, you can't oranges have oranges. too, but I can't have oranges. I never indulge in these things because I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. Lemon, I can do. I can do lemon, but I don't necessarily think that sounds good. I'm like, oh, no. Gross. It's great. Oh, Love did lemon. you have it? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess if it was like a. Trying to like a 40 lemon lemons curd and 40 of, shots of espresso. Do you know what I'm talking right about? Now. Like a lemon curd flavor. Mm hmm. With coffee, that might actually be kind of good. So that, yeah. but if it's like straight up lemonade with coffee in it, well, I just lemonade don't know if is I very sugary. So that's the only reason I am like, oh, I don't know, it might be too sweet. And then I'm talking about lemon curd. <laughs> oh lemon no, curd. lemon curd for sure. I would. I know that's like just sugar, lemon, and eggs. But for the most part, yeah, yeah. Which I did plan on making some because I have lemons. <laughs> oh, I made some like two weeks ago. Well, I made the lemon tart. And it was good. Yeah. Tarts are good, too. So now that we're done talking about coffee. The movie's <laughs> over. The movie's over. <laughs> Share now the that we got Mary. super pretentious in our own right over coffee. Oh, yeah, totally. We're dickholes. A little bit. The movie opening weekend, $10 million. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that good? That's good, right? It, the budget was 12 Then that's good. Uh, I, yeah. This one, it was a successful movie. Uh, overall, it was, it was like popular. fifty-six million. Yeah, no, I wonder what their DVD sales and such oh, have shit. been. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. Well, home video because I think VHS is how I had it first. Yeah, all right. The DVD and now Blu-ray, which I don't have a Blu-ray anymore, but I did have it. I it don't have this Blu-ray either. The whatever edition. Yeah. That's one they did on Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, but. I don't know if I have anything else to say. Do I? I don't know. I love it. About about the cast and all that? About them. the movie? I think we covered most of everything, right? Maybe. I listened to a lot of, like, interviews with Amy Heckerling about it and, like, other people talking about it. And I can't remember a thing. I, do I remember- love that outfit, though, with Sarah. <coughs> I almost wore out those pants. To be like, this is my shirt. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh... I was going to say, Amy Heckerling, like, she worked on the movie or whatever. It was very popular. So then she got to do her show. And she was the producer of that show. She was on the set. Right. So (laughs) that's why she did Loser. She was tired of all this fucking pink shit. She's like, I can't, if I see pink one more fucking time. (laughs) So she did, like, a very dark, moody kind of New York movie instead. Which I thought was, I liked it. I don't think it's maybe the best. I also liked it. But I really liked it. And then I loved the one she did later with Michelle Pfeiffer and Paul Rudd, I Can Never Be Your Woman. I've, I've mentioned that before. I never saw that one. Love that I've movie. seen that Fast Times at Richmond. Well, yeah. I mean, who hasn't? Have I said that 
like the only fact I know about that movie or the blockbuster fact that like people were wearing out that film over that scene where the girl gets out of the pool and she like opens up her top oh, geez. and like the guy's like masturbating. Uh, yeah. That's like his fantasy and he's like masturbating yeah. to it. Um, I can't remember the woman's name, but yeah, that tape, that VHS tape got worn out on so many like tapes that were returned to Blockbuster. That's a yeah. What They were having to like man. change them out real quick. I know, right? Because people were just on. pausing, pausing VHS. To also, watch. Also, yeah, watch watch DVDs and Blu-rays, people. Well, not that. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> in that time frame, I feel like yeah. there are better tits in the world. Than, like, maybe, that maybe not stuff scene. that, like, teenagers can rent from Blockbuster. Oh. Oh. I, yeah, that's true. It was funny, though, when I worked at a, a video store. Mm-hmm. It that was, was the era of scrambled... Uh, porn channels yeah yeah, yeah yeah but it was funny too because like you could like i always noticed like the gay kids like, yeah who couldn't acknowledge it or whatever but like you know they like their mom is like well what movie did you want again or whatever and they go and pick up something that i knew was a gay movie but the mom probably wouldn't know it was a gay <laughs> movie and i yeah. was like oh i see what's going on here you get your movie and you name, go home name a gay movie um what was oh god what was that one called it was so good it was a british one very fantastic for the young gays downton abbey no i feel like it <laughs> has the word get get it wasn't get over it because that's another movie that's a good movie mm-hmm. well i enjoyed it i don't think anybody else did but i liked it directed by a gay man so fuck everything oh pretty great pretty great pretty great uh Ooh, gay directors. God I don't think damn, we have a lot of gay directors movie? either. I used to own that movie for the longest time on DVD. I could only think Get I Over It. Of, it and you put it in it. my head. Yeah, I know. Get short. Get, out. get smart. Get. I don't remember. That's okay. It was good, though. It was a British movie. It was about a kid that was gay and like trying to. Billy like... Elliot? Oh, my. Billy Elliot. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, God, I love that movie. That's a good Billy movie. Billy Elliot? Billy Elliot. Yeah, you know. Love. <laughs> love it. I also love that uh, at the end of that movie, uh, when the dad goes to see the performance uh, of Swan Lake that mm-hmm. he's in. Well, I don't, th- I don't know if they ever mentioned what he's in, but it's Swan but Lake. But Swan Lake, yeah. And it was a specific version of Swan Lake. It was... Um, one that Annie Lennox loved as well because she had a lot of the dancers do her her up a lot. She did uh, the video for No More I Love You's and she specifically wanted the dancers from that company and that show to come and do this because they all had to dance on point Mm -hmm. which is not something men usually do. Yeah, It's a woman's burden. So she loved the idea that men are doing this so she had them come and do that in her video. But um... Anyway, the cast, what it was like a kind of a gay version of Swan Lake, basically. That's pretty great. And that version, you can get a copy of it. Like, I had it at one point. But it was, um, you could get the performance, the stage performance or whatever. You know how they do that. Like, they yes. like, a stage, like, film the stage version yes. or whatever. But, anyway, the main character in that version that you can purchase is the guy who played Billy Elliot at the end of Billy Elliot. So, it is Billy Elliot doing that performance of Swan Lake. So, you can actually watch what it was like. Does that make sense? Yes. And I thought that was... Because I love that. And that's what... They filmed it just because that was a film yes. that was there. And the guy looked the right way or whatever. But he's like the main character in the Swan Lake. So, right on. brilliant. In that outfit. So, it is. It's Billy Elliot. Billy Elliot. God, I love it. That's a long-winded Billy Elliot story. It was, yeah. I'm asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for today. That's uh, it for Clueless. Oh, my God. I have to pee really bad, so it's hard to move. So, <laughs> next week starts Our crazy Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest. Where we're doing double features all every week. So, we're doing... Yeah, we're doing... Wait a minute. How are we doing it? I forgot. Are we doing just... Are we... We're doing two episodes each week. We're doing two movies each week. Yes. 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 So we're going to do... They're going to come out every Monday... Okay. ...and Thursday. Sure. 
So you'll have the normal Monday. Uh huh. But you also get a bonus on Thursday. Uh, because honestly, John and I couldn't we, settle on so two many. movies. We couldn't. And then we couldn't settle on four movies. So we're doing eight movies. <laughs> so we're doing eight movies. Yeah. So <laughs> be sure to um, have a lot of notifications to ignore because it's going to be overwhelming yeah, for it's you. Be a long, but we're doing a it for us. Crazy week <laughs> or a crazy month. I'm sorry, but it's going to be fun. Whatever. Yeah. It's a lot of, whatever. A lot of stuff for you to. You're gonna. You're gonna be so happy with all the content we're gonna <laughs> throw out there. Uh, yeah. So. I, so. Next yeah, so week? starting next week, we're mm-hmm. going to start the new, the, the, the funds, and um, mm-hmm. is it going to be this one? Uh, yeah, it's going to be this one and that one. And, oh, okay. What, for right? next? Okay, so the, 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 the upcoming two movies that we're doing. Yeah, uh, our upcoming double, spooky double feature. Spooky, so Monday it's going to be Eyes Without a Face. Yeah. Which and, is a French film from 1960. Yes, and um, in conjunction with that, I chose Leatherface, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Which I have never seen. Yeah. So I'm very And I hadn't this. seen uh, Eyes Without a Face. Yeah. So, so we're surprised each other left right. Yeah, we've got our own face swap films. Oh, it's... It, we're not going to do Face Off, <laughs> which is I funny. Am that upset. Was, well, we'll say it, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, so yeah, yeah. so keep uh, keep. Uh, sus- and I'm the uh, 1971. Oh, the Toby Hooper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not the <laughs> not just the Apple. Apple Beal. The Toby Hooper. The Toby Hooper who yeah. also directed Poltergeist. He sure Surprisingly, did. Surprisingly, because we thought it was Steven, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, guys. Go listen to all our other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, subscribe, rate, review on iTunes mm-hmm. or whichever platform that you use. Email, questions, concerns, suggestions. Uh, suggestions, for sure. We yeah. have some suggestions, people. Come on. Yeah, we're like drying up a little we're bit. Up well, I mean, other than October, October roll. Actually, always October, be oversaturated. We're booked. We're yeah. booked for October, so don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but November, December. Yeah. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just throw them in there. Yeah. But yeah, well, uh, until then, email us at onefootpodcast at gmail.com and uh, bye bye. Oh, <laughs> totally clueless. Oh, shit. What happened? Did I do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't do it. Stupid fucking phone. I, I mean, recording device. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>